Welcome back guys, I'm Chris Camera Guy, and on this beautiful Monday, we'll be taking a deep dive into a story that is still currently unfolding. It all starts out as a supposed love story, a harmonious union between a pair of twin flames, but soon unravels into a horror story of manipulation, deceit, unrequited love, and even tax evasion. This developing story tells of a cult that is still active and operating right here in the US. And just like every other cult that has come before, this cult is using spiritual ideology to prey on innocent people's insecurities in order to gain personal wealth and control over their group. Today, I'd like to shed light and expose the evil that lives within the organization called Twin Flame Universe. Got a couple cars in here. You may recognize the Porsche. And uh, good old Corvette. This is my pool, my slide. You know, my little hot tub. And... Founders Jeff and Shalia Devine have targeted a demographic of mostly women and LGBTQ New Age spiritualists that suffer from extreme loneliness. They make the claim that their relationship serves as proof that the twin flame concept is in fact real and that they can actually assist you in finding your twin flame as well. The husband and wife duo have developed the guise of a self-help type coaching organization, but their brainwashing tactics have done the complete opposite of helping their followers to become more attractive and viable as a partner. They have cursed people into stalking others, cutting off contact with their families permanently, and my friends, that's not the only thing they have talked people into cutting off permanently. Their breasts, folks. They have encouraged and pushed women into surgically removing their breasts from their bodies. Moreover, at least one person has even taken their own life as a result of their program. So let's jump right into it. What we know about Jeff Devine is that he was born on April 5th, 1988, and given the name Jeffrey Ayan, he grew up in Michigan, and as a teen, Jeff was part of the theater club, as well as being an avid swimmer. After graduating high school, he enrolled at Michigan State University and majored in business. Once Jeff completed his studies in 2010, he moved to California, and that's when Jeffrey started going by the name Jeff Divine. He claims to have changed his name because God gave him the divine message to do so. Jeff makes claims that he had a transcendental awakening that now allows him to receive downloads from the divine source, God himself. He says that he first noticed the messages from God when he began the practices of meditation and yoga. After his awakening, Jeff had a calling to move to Hawaii, where he officially declared himself a lifestyle and design entrepreneur. I'm not really quite sure what that means, but let's just continue with the story. His company's mission statement was centered on helping people to develop a greater sense of consciousness. In 2012, Jeff met a young lady online. Her name was Megan Plant, and in 2014, they ended up meeting in real life and fell madly in love. Megan introduced him to the concept of twin flames, leading them to believe that their souls had been connected over many lifetimes and that it was their destiny in this lifetime to join in a harmonious union so they could attain ascension. The concept of Twin Flames has been around for a very long time, but was first popularized in 1999 by American spiritualist Elizabeth Clare Prophet. She has a book titled Soulmates in Twin Flames. In the book, Elizabeth Prophet mixes Hindu, Buddhist, and even evangelical Christian beliefs to argue two people with the permanent divine connection that's required for each person to reach enlightenment or salvation. The couple believed they were true twin flames, and it seems that a light bulb went off in Jeff's entrepreneurial mind. The couple eventually moved to Michigan, and Megan decided to give up her known identity and change her name to Shalia Devine. The couple got married, and in 2017, founded a business together called 
Twin Flames Universe. They believe that every individual on planet Earth has a twin flame, and the mission at Twin Flame Universe is to help by guiding their clients on their path to finding their own true eternal love. In August of 2018, the couple published a book titled Twin Flames, Finding Your Ultimate Lover. The cover of the book describes the read as essential teachings and spiritual masterwork from Twin Flames and Permanent Harmonious Union. They also went on to create numerous virtual courses costing $222 per month. And this is a 12-month course, mind you, so it totals to $2,644 annually. Whoa, that's a whole lot of money. There are numerous courses that they recommend you take to help you get closer to finding what they call call Harmonious Union. The couple began running ads on social media platforms all around the U.S. and in other countries as well. Their Facebook group is still currently has over 70,000 followers. They even developed their own version of psychological therapy to assist their clients in realigning their thought process. They call this method MAP or Mind Alignment Process. And they claim that through this treatment, one can alleviate symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, and even depression. Jeff stated that he is working on licensing MAP to the U.S. military and will be a billionaire once this is achieved. Many have asserted that this business is actually just a front for a cult, but Jeff and Shalia disagree and firmly claim that they're devoted to spiritual wellness, relationship guidance, and self-love through connection to one's flame. One of the staple practices at Twin Flame Universe that is coached to their clients for self-development is called the mirror practice. Jeff Devine instructs his students to look into a mirror and focus on what is troubling them. And once they have identified the core issue that is causing them anguish, they are to redirect the blame to themselves. Basically, they claim that all of your problems are created through your own doing or, or thoughts that, that only you can solve. Only you can solve these issues by taking accountability for it. This would even include issues that are being inflicted by another person. If this guy was a band, it would be called the Gaslight Anthem. Jeff's college degree came in handy thanks to the knowledge of business he attained in college. He quickly realized that he could avoid paying taxes by claiming that their business cult is actually a religious organization. So in 2019, Jeff and Shalia founded a non-denominational church called the Church of Union. Supposedly, their goal was not to evade taxes, but to unify all religions at their church. Jeff and Shalia were making hundreds of thousands of dollars from all of the courses and services that they had available on their website. The more courses the clients take, the more levels they unlock along their journey to, to higher consciousness and divinity, which is what is essential to attracting their twin flame and ultimately achieving ascension. In order to maintain a higher retention rate, they began to employ their clientele. The members work towards receiving special titles such as Certified Ascension Coach and Master Certified Ascension Coach. Once a member receives the status of coach, they start to earn money for providing coaching services to other clients. Can someone pull up the definition of a pyramid scheme? Some people even quit their day jobs to start coaching for Twin Flame Universe full time and have their dues deducted from their earnings. Many members became estranged and distant from their families when Jeff and Shalia encouraged the group members to cut off their family and friends. They claim that any opposition from people who may not understand their Twin Flame journey could result in an energetic blockage from obtaining their one true goal of finding their twin. Understandably, many families of the members became very concerned when they were suddenly cut out of their loved ones' lives for no apparent reason whatsoever, and some even went as far as contacting the police. Many people have gone several years without seeing their relatives since they've joined the Twin Flame universe. During coaching sessions, the members would tell their mentors about their feelings regarding life, love, family, work, in a whole range of subjects. This allowed Jeff and Shalia unlimited insight as to their clients' vulnerabilities and personality types. 
The coaches would report back to Jeff with information on the sessions in order to know how he wanted them to direct to their mentees. Things got even weirder when Shalia made the announcement to the organization that she received a vivid message from God telling her that Jeff is actually the second coming of Christ. Jeff Devine is Jesus Christ. I figure y'all will catch up eventually. And I'm not hiding anything. Like, I'm literally telling you I'm Christ. At this point, the two were positioning themselves as unquestionable spiritual leaders so that all of their followers would oblige their authoritative guidance. Jeff was even documented telling a follower that he was her god. Jeff had appointed himself as a sole individual that could designate a person's twin flame, so basically the members were at the mercy of who Jeff decided would be their true love. According to the ideology of the twin flame universe, people can experience the divine happiness of harmonious union with their twin flame and that there is absolutely no way you could be separated from that twin once you have discovered them or once Jeff has discovered them for you. They claim that this can be healed through the teachings that Jeff and Shalia provide in her courses and through coaching. During Jeff's coaching sessions, if someone expressed a desire to give up their pursuit, he would belittle the person and would tell them things like, stop being a little bee. <laughs> <laughs> he would belittle the person and would tell them things like, stop being a little bitch and use your sexual prowess to lure them in. He would push these desperate women to pursue their so-called twin flame, even if the love and attention was not being reciprocated. Under Jeff's direction, some women had been arrested or had restraining orders placed against them for harassment and stalking the person that they were made to believe was their twin flame. Twin Flame's universe promised and guaranteed their followers that they would help them find their one true love, their twin flame. But many had followed the program to a T and still after years had not entered into a harmonious union with their twin. Over time, tensions started to grow within the organization. Jeff and Shalia's lifestyle was becoming increasingly lavish and they realized that they would need testimonies from satisfied customers so that they could establish confirmation bias in the group and keep their money grubbing scheme in motion. Jeff and Shalia needed a success story to prove to their students that their methods and courses have validity. They were going to manufacture hope for their members one way or another. One of their youngest people in the group was named Marley. She was only 19 years old when her sister Keely, who was a certified master ascension coach, introduced her to Twin Flames universe as a means of self-improvement. Marley didn't necessarily have a particular interest in finding love. She mostly just wanted to appease her sister and hopefully gain some spiritual growth in the process. During one group meeting, Jeff asked Marley if she was interested in a particular person romantically and asked if she had been talking to anyone. She stated that there had been a young man named Joshua who messaged her online. However, he was 11 years older than her and she was not attracted to him. In fact, she actually found him a little creepy. This man was unemployed, drug addicted, had a criminal record and was diagnosed with mental illness. Sounds like a real catch. Kind of like the man who would live at his mom's house in his 30s. I'm telling you ladies, beware of these type of men. Anyhow, despite all of the red flags, Jeff and Shalia talked Marley into believing that Joshua was indeed her twin flame. At this point, Marley really trusted the divines. It wanted to appease the couple as well as the group. They eventually influenced the impressionable 19-year-old girl to uproot her life and move cross-country to Utah in order to be with her eternal love, Joshua, who is essentially a stranger and a dangerous one at that. Even though she was terribly unhappy and fearful for her well-being, Jeff and Shalia dismissed the girl's reservations and would have her publicly praise her relationship as a successful, harmonious union, even though she was scared, confused, and really, really miserable. Marley's sister Keely was not having a great time with her supposed twin flim either. They had a lot of issues surrounding intimacy. In her coaching session with Jeff, she talked about feeling pressured by her boyfriend to have sex even when she didn't want to. But every time she would bring up the topic, Jeff would shrug it off as a minor issue and direct her back 
to the mirror practice. At one point, a member had posted in a group forum that she was feeling suicidal. She ended up taking her own life, which left Keeley feeling wracked with guilt. She realized the serious damage this program was inflicting on people and decided to leave her position at TFU and go back home. Thankfully, she rescued Marley, her sister, from her horrible situation on her way out as well. With two of their most valued testimonials gone, the couple had to think of a way to keep the members who were growing impatient ho hopeful of finding a harmonious union. They announced that the members could only find their twin flames within the organization. However, there weren't enough men to go around as most of their members were women. And as I stated earlier, many who joined the program were bisexual or even lesbian. So in order to prove that their methods actually work, Jeff got the brilliant idea to start hooking different women up with each other from within the organization. Problem solved, right? This next part is probably the darkest for me. Due to the irreparable damage, Jeff told the woman that in order for there to be a real twin flame union, one must be the divine feminine and one the divine masculine. He would be the person to assign the gender rules for each couple. If he determined the woman as a masculine, they were told that they had to actually become a man in order to fulfill that role, even if they didn't have that sexual proclivity, mind you. Even if these women did not in initially even identify as masculine or feel like they were born in the wrong gender, Jeff would push them to transition, stating that they could not achieve harmonious union if they did not. I guess he had really put the dedication into finding love and were willing to do whatever it took at that point to obtain it. Talk about commitment. Some women simply cut their hair and started dressing like men. It even changed their names, while others decided to go fully in, taking hormones, getting double mastectomies, and fully transitioning into, into men in order to be in a relationship with the women that were chosen for them. He even paired up trans women with trans men. <laughs> it's crazy. As long as each participant was willing to accept the opposite gender role from the other, according to Jeff, the couple could attain a harmonious union. But wait, there's more. Jeff bought a large portion of land and put out the memo that he expected the group members to come live on the commune with him and Shalia. Sounds all too familiar, don't you think? It makes sense though, considering that he had previously joked on social media about starting his own Jonestown stating in the post that he'd bring the punch. He also let all of his coaches know that he would be taking a larger cut of their coaching earnings, 50%, and that left many wondering how they would be able to get by financially, especially considering that they were already spending a good portion of their earned income on the program. To end insult to injury, Jeff and Shalia were all the while flaunting their own wealth shamelessly by posting pictures and bragging about their fancy mansion, sports cars, and designer clothes and shoes. Secondary bathtub up here. Look at this. You could fit like, like 15 children in here. This behavior began to alienate several members of the group that had been devout supporters. Jeff and Shalia called a virtual meeting with the group to announce that they had received the message from God, letting them know that they had a third flame that would be joining them soon, a female. However, the third twin was still apparently in spirit form. Jeff prophesied that a baby girl would be soon joining the duo on their twin flame journey. So Jeff and Shalia are having a baby. Jeff and Shalia also told the group that their soon-to-be daughter would be bound to them by their twin flame union and would never be allowed to experience love outside of the trio. No dating, no sex. She'll be expected to live a life of celibacy at home with her mother and father. The couple in the group started to make preparations for a baby. Soon thereafter, Shalia became pregnant just as Jeff's prophecies had predicted. Early into the pregnancy, the two called another meeting to let the group know that they were actually going to abort the pregnancy that day. They claim that it was ectopic and not viable, and there wasn't any proof that the two were lying about the reason for the abortion. However, I still wonder if maybe they decided not to keep it because they found out it was a boy. I mean, 
that would seriously discredit Jeff's divine message and, and, and would not exactly fit into the plans they had made for the harmonious triplet flame union. We may never know the truth surrounding that part of the story, but the two finally did have a chance to fulfill the prophecy after Shalia got pregnant a second time and gave birth to a healthy baby girl in April of this year. The digital footprint that these two have left from recorded coaching sessions, social media live streams, and hours of documented footage is huge and details the history and actions of the Jeff and Shalia organization since its inception in 2017. When Keeley left, she had a drive that included everything, and honestly more than I can even fit into a 30 minute video. There's so much more crazy stuff revealed about this couple in the recently released three hour long Netflix documentary that, ex that exposes the controversies that have been plaguing the Twin Flame universe. Due to the expose, the Divines have received a large amount of disdain and criticism surrounding their organization, ideology, and practices. So much in fact that they've disabled their comment sections on all of their social media accounts. At least seven ex-members and one member's mother have come forward to speak out and warn people of the nefarious practices within the organization. But in 2020, Jeff and Shalia attempted to silence those people by filing defamation lawsuits against them. The judicial system saw right through the Divine's intentions and dismissed the case for lack of jurisdiction, with the judge noting that the apparent bad faith behind the suit. Despite the verdict, the court cases had dragged on for a year, essentially decimating their opponent's finances with all of the legal fees that had accumulated over that time. One concerned mother was hit with legal bills totaling over $30,000. Unbelievable! Many people are hoping that the popularity of this Netflix documentary Documentary will spark a criminal investigation into the alleged wrongdoing or at least prevent others from falling victim to the couple. Currently, Twin Flames is the third most searched documentary in the world. And despite the expose, Jeff and Shalia Devine continue to operate their cult as if nothing had ever occurred. Well, friends, that was a whole lot to unpack. And I want to thank you for staying with me all the way to the end of this video and for joining me each Monday as you do. I know that you could be doing anything else right now, but you're here with me. And that truly means the world. Let me know what you think about this insane story. And if you have any suggestions and topics that you want me to cover, don't forget to add them in the comments below. Bye for now. And I'll see you again on Thursday for the Chris and Ollie show.